around, didn't I? Macy. Ozzy. This is Ozzy. Sit. Yes. This is Macy. Sit. Yes. Um, this is their roadmap to success. So um, you know this little one? I'll start in half for both of you then. Sit. Yes. Okay, well, let's talk about marker words, what we're talking about right now. So a marker word is the word that we use uh, to communicate when the dogs do something we like. The guardians here decided to use the word yes. So anytime the dog does what you want, I want somebody to say the word yes, and then you follow it up within two seconds of a treat or a, uh, a pet. So as soon as the butt hits the ground, yes, and then pet. Um, as soon as the chest hits the ground, yes, pet. As soon as they come to you, yes, pet. Also, uh, looking in the eyes, you can say yes and pet for that. That is a desirable, for him, he likes to back up. So if he, every time he backs up, yes, and then give give them a treat. After a while, this helps the dog identify the action or the thing, the behavior that you want that's gonna get them a reward. Then after we've done this enough, then we can practice, uh, we can switch them over to a cue or what a lot of people used to refer to as a command word. A cue should only be assigned when we are 90% certain the dog's gonna do the action that cue represents immediately after. So if I can lure Macy into a sit here, so I can say, Macy, or here, Ozzy, sit, yes. So right there, I was pretty confident I could lure him into a sit. He already knows how to sit, but I would lure him in, and then I, as soon as his butt hits the ground, I said yes and gave him a treat. It's okay to say the command Q and the marker word overlapping for a period of time, but eventually I just say sit, the dog sits, and I give it a treat. And I don't have to use the marker word. Now, uh, let me see, I talked about exercise to start off with. Um, these dogs both are labs, they have a lot of energy, especially Macy. Macy had kind of a little bit of a tough situation and she was in a home that wasn't probably right for her. And now she's in a good home, but she's kind of a little bit nervous about some things. Uh, lack of rules and too much exercise will amplify those things. So I went over creative forms of exercise. Doggy Stairmaster, Scent Games, Google that one. Tug of War with those timeouts that we talked about. Sniff Walks, um, also feeding out of a snuffle mat, as well as some treat dispensing toys like an Omega Paw Tricky Trainer Treat Ball. Um, I like the Guardians also get a couple of lick mats. And anytime that Macy, somebody's over that Macy's un, un, uh, not, uh, not sure about or insecure about, get uh, one of those lick mats ready, have peanut butter on it, and then put it down the ground. Licking releases endorphins, same thing with chewing. So you might want to also go to the green spot, get some uh, cow kneecaps, or one of my dog's favorites, because that's good for like seven to 10 chew, chewing sessions. That was not a fart. And um, uh, you can also get tracheas, cow cheeks, uh, bull, bull pee pees. Um, you can get, uh, there's a whole bunch of different stuff that you can get. But giving dogs hard things that they can chew on is a nice way to relieve some stress. Um, and also uh, licking and, and chewing releases endorphins. So if we have a lick mat, and every time that somebody comes over them and, and uh, Macy is un uncomfortable, we brought out that lick mat, it's releasing the endorphins, we can start creating a positive association. Um, we went over, uh, let me see, uh, and, uh, uh, I think that's it for exercise, but uh, the idea is to come up with a routine where we can get uh, mental stimulation and physical exercise every about two, uh, probably in this guy's case, an hour and a half to two hours, mostly for Macy. Uh, for Ozzy, we probably can go a little bit longer than that. But the idea is to come up with the right combination so that the, we're taking care of the dog's needs. The guardians get, uh, one of the guardians gets a little bit nervous if she sees them playing too rough or during meal time or certain stuff like that. Remember, we can always exercise our dogs before a walk to have a better walk. We have guests come over, we exercise the dogs about a half an hour before. Just make sure the dogs always have at least 10 minutes to rest before the next thing happens. So exercise can set them up for success. A lack of rules uh, is a very common mistake that a lot of people make with a lot of dogs, especially dogs that come from a checkered background because we think we're going to take away the rules and could, to try to make up for the checkered past. It doesn't. It actually usually makes dogs more insecure. Having uh, uh, a good leader, somebody that you are confident in their ability to provide a safe environment is very reassuring for humans. It's the same thing for dogs. So if the humans are enforcing rules, the dogs can actually see the humans acting like leaders and also that demonstration of their leadership and not in a dominant sort of way, but uh, it helps them feel more secure and comfortable and not like I have to go charge the window or bark at the door or things along those lines. So some of the rules I suggest is not being allowed, uh, not being allowed in uh, off of this area rug when people are eating at the dinner table, not being allowed onto the hardwood floor when anybody's preparing food in the kitchen. When one dog has an object the other and the other dog wants it, we're gonna keep them separated. Um, we're gonna feed the dogs uh, using one of the videos above uh, for the uh, bucket game, but also use the snuffle mats and, and the uh, tricky trainer treat balls and those things. Make sure you're separating them. 
Um, the idea is to help the dogs practice a little self-restraint, self-control, um, not getting near people when they're eating. And that's why it's important that we're also not feeding the dogs from the kitchen table because that rewards them for the, doing that behavior that they know they shouldn't do. Also remember to use those premax. Uh, less desirable behavior earns me a more desirable behavior. Want to go outside, I have to sit at the door. Want to come inside, got to sit at the door. And if they don't sit within two seconds of the first and only time you say it, walk away, sit down, wait one minute. Next time, uh, go back to the door, give them another opportunity, two seconds, they don't do it. Walk away for two minutes, four minutes, eight minutes, keep double the length of time. Um, eventually, the dog will sit at the door to ask to go out, but you can also incorporate this sits for when you're playing fetch. You gotta drop the ball before I pick it up and throw it. Once the dog's dropping consistently, now you have to drop the ball and sit, and then I'll pick it up and throw it. Or sit and wait a second. Um, one of the things for Ozzy I'd like you to do is, uh, I can show you real, real quick, Ozzy. Um, Ozzy will, uh, I'll do it with, at three times, so we'll give you, show the before and after. Sit, crash. Well, that's my word. So I give him the treat and what happens? He got right back up. So we're gonna start elongating and have him practice doing this. So I have two treats and you're gonna get one after this. Sit, down, uh-uh. Sit, down. Yeah, this is, you're not helping. Down, yes. So I can have, hold a second treat there. As soon as the chest is around, I say yes. Then I release that treat and I, sh and I have the other one right in front of the nose. So the dog stays lingering in that sit and I wait, or in that down, I wait for an extra second. Then I release that treat and eventually go to two seconds and three seconds and four seconds. Eventually I have your dog laying down and just chilling for like 10 seconds instead of bouncing up and going to the next thing. It helps practice impulse control. Yes. Um, let me see. We also talked about, uh, so for the pre-max, do it for uh, leashing the dog up, getting out of the kennels, playing fetch. Uh, anytime that they're doing something, make them stop and kind of get it. Uh, kind of reset. And if they're too excited, do what I did with Macy. So pull out about 10 treats and ask your dog to do the best cue that they can, as many of them as you can in 10 seconds. Macy was jumping up on the counter and freaking out because we pull out the food. I walked around and I did like five or six sits. Her energy went from like nine to three. And because now she's focusing on me. So if your dog is, uh, that's a good indicator. If your dog's too aroused to sit down, they're too aroused. Don't continue going on. If you're walking towards something and they get fired up and they can't sit, don't get them closer to it because they're already demonstrating I'm at my limit. So you want to back up and kind of like what we did in a lot of points in the session is we created a, a, a classroom environment and practice to create a fundamental. Then we gradually raise the level to make it a little bit higher and a little bit higher. It's almost literally what we did in the bucket video that's above this one. Um, we also went over petting with a purpose and passive training. Petting with a purpose is if you want to pet the dog or the dog wants you to pet it, you tell it to sit. It has two seconds to sit. If it doesn't, you lean back and you do something else. Wait one minute. If it doesn't sit, and, uh, uh, and then, uh, well, you can, I just guess you can do the one minute. But really what I'm just telling the dog is if you do what I do want, you get rewarded. If you do something else, no problem. I'm not going to punish you. I'm not going to make a big deal. Because remember, any attention is validating. It's just the dog doesn't get what it wants. After a while, the dog will start sitting to prepay for attention. When it does, make sure you pet and reward that. Otherwise, it will go back doing the other things. Try to pet it under the chin, on the chest, or on the shoulders. And try to avoid over the head, especially for new people. Try to make sure that if the dogs are overexcited, that people are not coming over the, uh, reaching over the fence or coming in the door at that time. Put the dogs away when they're too excited because that's when those mistakes are going to happen. Uh, so petting with a purpose, make sure you use the watch, watch, watch your paycheck. If you suspect someone forgot, say paycheck. They have to stop petting. Tell the dog to sit. If they sit, they pet them on the chin and say yes. And then they tell the person, uh, say yes when the dog sits and then pet them on the chin and then tell the person I did it right. Now, um, and then we also went over uh, celebrating. So celebrating is rewarding the dogs when they do the things you want voluntarily without you asking. So right here, um, well, I thought he was gonna come by, he didn't. But if, it, if I'm sitting here and one of the dogs walks with me, I'm just saying yes and pet him. They sit at my feet, yes and pet him. Lay down, yes and pet him. When he backs up, yes and then pet him or give him a treat. After a while, then you can, if you can anticipate the backup, you say, oops, or excuse me, and then he backs up and you say yes and then you give him a treat. Now you've created a command cue after enough repetition. He's in your way, say, excuse me, and he backs up expecting to get that treat. Um, now, if you have any questions on the stuff we went over, let me know. I'm going to have Addy, our booking coordinator, give you a call to coordinate uh, and schedule the relaxation protocol that we talked about because I think that's really going to be helpful. That, um, Macy likes to actually jump at lunch and try to get food from the table when kids are eating. Yes, that's an example of celebrating right there. And you use the word celebrate as your reminder to somebody. You just missed an opportunity to pet the dog for something we want. So if somebody says celebrate to you, you just stop your ear and say yes, and you pet the dog as fast as you can. Um, uh, so uh, Addy will set that up. If you have any other questions or problems, please let me know because I can't help you if uh, you don't let me know you have problems. I will be mad at you if you have problems you don't let me know. Well, this is Macy, yes. Can we get over here and show everybody how pretty you are? Yes. 
And ask your vet about the fur around their eyes. I'm sure it's probably just genetics, but some dogs have a mite that, that chews the soft fur around their eye. So that's Macy, this is Ozzy, and this is the Roadmap to Success. Remember, everything you do trains your dog, only sometimes you mean it.